Thank you, Dr. Peterson. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, truly a great honor for me to present this uh, invited talk. At the outset, I would like to acknowledge and thank our senior colleagues for developing various techniques in endoscopy and our industry partners for matching up with the technology. Endoscopy service has exploded and replaced surgery on many fronts. In order for us to continue on this journey, we need a team that is both stable, knowledgeable, and dedicated to endoscopy service. I see that we have a problem, and I'm sure many of you acknowledge we are dealing with retention of staff in endoscopy, at least in the United States, as a problem. Let me share this story. Uh, this is the work of uh, Dr. Ivan Dirlan from University of North Carolina. He looked at the endoscopy unit turnover between 2003 to 2005. At the start, 10 nurses were there. At the end of the study, 15 nurses were there. It looks like it's a great uh, recruitment and retention, but in fact, during that period, 19 nurses came in and 14 went out. With a median stay of less than two years, that has impacted on the operation of endoscopy on several fronts, safety, success, and efficiency. All of them were impacted by this high turnover. 20 years later, last month, this was what was happening in my own endoscopy unit. One of my technicians came in and said, I'm filling in because the agency tech did not report to work today. The nurse commented about the turnover, and I didn't know what to say. So, the turnover problem continues in this country. And how about training in endoscopy? for our team members. We put in a lot of effort for a fellows training. How about nurses and technicians? In a survey that we did uh, three years ago in the Texas Medical Center of over 100 nurses, we noted that majority of the nurses did not have prior training in endoscopy. They learned it on the job and majority were not certified in endoscopy either. And it's uh, for technicians, slightly better, but not much better. So we have two problems, uh, retention and training. And uh, how do we fix this problem? And one approach is to develop a pipeline of trained technicians. So in this regard, I would like to share with you a snapshot of our journey starting in 2015, working closely with the Houston Community College and my colleagues in the medical center. We went through multiple steps. I'm happy to share the steps with anyone later. And we launched the program. The program consists of 35 credit hours with 19 credit hours dedicated to endoscopy for high school graduates. And because there was no learning material for us to depend or use from other centers, I had the distinct honor and special privilege of working with a trained educator, Ms. Sanji Suresh, and a trained and an experienced medical illustrator, Ms. Angela Deal, to create the entire learning material for endoscopy. Over 2,000 slide materials were created thanks to the support from my institution uh, with their funding. We converted these slides into audio recorded material of, uh, so that the students can watch the videos and then go to the class and apply the flipped classroom approach of learning. This material is also available to you or to anyone interested on the YouTube. Uh, it's an open access. And uh, the students started their training in this uh, state-of-the-art building. And they all worked 
during the daytime. So they went to school during the night, twice a week, where they learned the cognitive aspects of endoscopy. And they also had hands-on training, both in the sim lab as well as in the endoscopy labs under supervised technician's observation and mentorship. I'm excited to share with you that 12 students graduated last year, and we are very fortunate to recruit four of them. And uh, I had the distinct uh, privilege of working with two of the technicians just four weeks ago. Um, yeah, both were so facile that they were able to do the first EMR of their life independently, without supervision. And here is one example to give you, to show that they have helped flawlessly, and it was fun to work with them. Although we developed the program, and the second batch is graduating next week, uh, are there ways to improve on what we have done? Current program lasts for a year, and we are exploring the possibility of making it a three-month program working with the Texas Workforce Apprenticeship Program that has some funding, and also exploring the possibility of working with a high school in Houston as part of secondary education so that during their four-year high school, they also learn endoscopy tech uh, technician skills so that when they graduate, they have a second certificate and ready to join the workforce. While this is happening, our leadership at the ASG has taken several initiatives, and I'm excited to share with you that in the 80 year history of our society, for the first time two years ago, the governing board has signed off on creating associate membership for technicians. And as part of it, they have access to all the learning material that is available to the students in the community college, also at the ASGE. And we are taking our first steps to create an endoscopy tech certification. As part of this, we created a question bank, reviewed by experts, and deployed a few pilot tests with the hope that we will deploy a certification uh, later this year. I'm hopeful that the certification would uh, help the human resource departments of institutions to support the technicians with uh, and recognize them for what they deserve in terms of their pay and help with the retention. Although we talked about endoscopy technicians, uh, there is no formal program for nurses. But we could follow what the operating room uh, nurse residency program does for a year. Instead, we could shorten for three months and create endoscopy nurse residency program so that they learn all the skills that are necessary along with the cognitive aspects of endoscopy so that they enjoy working with us and stay uh, in the endoscopy unit for a longer haul. With this, in, in addition to this, uh, uh, and finally, uh, to respond to the challenge by our president, a team effort is required to build a team. And we should not shy away from looking at investment opportunities for education uh, that uh, American Rescue Act has put in. And our own institutional leadership and all of us should work together to create a safe workplace with excellent culture of well-being and the society doing its part in creating a certification for recognition will hopefully create a team that lasts and help us do a better job. This is the effort of many, and I want to thank all my colleagues for making this uh, project possible. And with your permission, I would like to dedicate this talk to my mentor, Dr. K.D. Baradhan, who passed away last month. Thank you.